as we continue our discussion on uh, advanced financial modeling we will now discuss a few of the features that financial models have and we've already seen that some of the primary features of financial models is that they should be accurate and reliable they should be flexible and they should be user friendly in the next set of videos we're going to first look at what is the problem if uh, if uh, some of these are not flexible or not user friendly and how does a user friendly model look like essentially right so always keep in mind that when you are building or constructing a financial model the user is important right and the user could be someone else the user may not be you you might just be the person who's constructing it but someone else might be looking at this model someone else might be using this model for something else right and even you yourself if you open this model after a month or a two month period or a six month period you should be able to comprehend and understand what has been done in the model right so it's important to look at some of these examples of flexibility user friendliness and accuracy and reliability accuracy and reliability is straightforward essentially if you build a model that is incorrect if you build a model that is uh, that is not going to kind of work properly then that's a clear issue uh, in general and all of us will agree that a model that throws out uh, incorrect numbers is an undesirable model you would want a model that has been checked for accuracy if you are calculating operating profit margin you should be calculating operating profit margin accurately and reliably right so you can't have a model that is not giving you reliable data that's a given that's a given in in any case let's look at a couple of examples of how flexibility and user friendliness could come into picture so to understand user friendliness let's look at this data let's look at this data that you see here this is the profit and loss uh, account uh, of tata motors in crores and you find all sorts of uh, numbers here we are not really sure if you look at the fy16 numbers there are two columns where the numbers are mentioned some of them are in this column and some of them are in this column it's not clearly identified as to what is the sum of what it is left up to the user's imagination to find out then there are a lot of these zeros which are available here not really relevant from the perspective right so it's it's a it's a model that is a little bit difficult to read if if you just try to kind of grasp what is written here it is a little bit difficult to understand comprehend read and identify what numbers mean what and it just goes on and on and on and on and uh, it has not been formatted properly right that's a classic example of a non user friendly model it doesn't give a good feel when you look at it it doesn't give a feeling that i can understand this it doesn't give a feeling that i can comprehend this and use this elsewhere right because i will spend a lot of time in just understanding this model right take another example let's look at this example again financial statements of a company uh there are some remarks given here there is some assumption that is there on the sheet there are some years for which the numbers are given the formatting has not been done correctly for that if you look at them closely some numbers look very large and some numbers don't look as large if you go down it just ends here and we're not really sure what what's happening here in terms of the numbers that you see uh you see abbreviations in the form of coc which probably stands for cost of capital but how has it been calculated where has it come from what's the explanation for that that's all not available here so on both counts in terms of user friendliness of understanding this model and the second in terms of the actual accuracy of this model we're not really sure what what is it trying to achieve it probably is trying to find the valuation because we see discount factors and we see present value and discount factors uh, typically are uh, are being calculated and these are hard coded if you see right so if i change this number here to 12% it doesn't change the discount factors at all right so not very flexible as well not flexible hard coded decimal points all over the place somewhere we have four decimals somewhere we have two somewhere we have three so it just doesn't give a feel that you know this number and this number might be comparable but 
uh, so so if we see this number and we see this number they are comparable because one is 49000 one is 43000 but because the decimal is not correctly placed it it does not give a good understanding of uh, what what uh, these numbers are and that's the primary issue when you look at flexibility and usability of models it is very important for us to remember that excel is a quick spreadsheet is a tool for me and you to do calculations fast but if you want to use it in terms of a bigger goal bigger objective which is to solve a problem like valuation or something then it is important that we we basically use a, a protocol where a lot of it is very clearly cleanly defined assumptions probably go into different sheets financials go into different sheets valuation goes into different sheets so it's easier for someone to find it out right we're going to look at all this in subsequent sections and understand this in financial modeling now let's look at an example of user friendliness how about a sheet looking something like this right where you have clearly identified what are the headers you have clearly identified what are the major headers you have clearly taken the the numbers in terms of a single decimal double decimal point scenario and you have very clearly outlined the key relevant parameters that you're looking for which is profit and loss for the period right font size is same uh, the the decimal points are same numbers are clearly demarcated and you only have financial statements on this particular sheet you will probably have something else on another sheet and uh, and you will build a model using multiple number of sheets it is important to understand that the model should look aesthetically good as well as clean when someone is trying to get some data out of it right and that's one of the primary purposes or objectives of financial modeling that it needs to be user friendly it needs to be reliable it needs to be user friendly and it needs to be flexible as well let's take an example of flexibility now right let's say we have been given this task that I have to find the sum average count max and min of all these numbers and let's say I might be asked to do this for multiple set of numbers again and again and again so you know tomorrow I might get another set of numbers right so how do I go about solving it right one of the mechanisms is I basically put in uh, the functions here which is what is the sum of all this right so I can type down what is the sum of all these numbers then I can type down what is the average of all these numbers and max and min and count and all those functions I can put in right that's one way to do it now the problem with that is one I have to do it multiple times and uh, it kind of gets frozen there uh, two I get all the data I might not so I, I may not have the requirement of showing all the data to everyone let's say the functionality is that if someone says max I'm able to give the max value and if someone says count I'm able to give the count of these numbers I want that kind of flexibility in this right so it's probably going to come in a in a scenario where first I have to have a function which can give me any of these so possibility of exploring any such functions luckily Excel has a function called subtotal right so let's learn about subtotal if I type subtotal here and I open the bracket as a function argument it says a function number and reference reference is simple that's the set of cells which we are looking at the function number is the argument we are looking for right so if I put one one stands for average how do I find this I can go here delete it and you will see all these numbers falling down so one is for average two is for count three is for count a uh, four is for max five is for min six is for product standard deviation sample standard deviation population sum, variance of sample variance of population and then it again starts with average and the same numbers again right so depending on the version of Excel I think it works but if I choose to count it will give me count and it'll say that there are 10 numbers which are available that's my answer right so basically now the moment you tell me I want to find out what is the what is the sum of all these numbers I have to choose 9 in this right I'll choose 9 and I'll press enter and I get the sum right the moment you say I want to find the maximum number out of these 
maximum is 4 so I choose 4 and 98 is the maximum number here right so it becomes a little bit more flexible than the first time where I was trying to just give five numbers or six numbers in different rows uh, or cells and columns right now the next stage could be user friendliness within this flexibility which is why don't we allow the user to actually just choose and the value comes out right so let's say what what all do we have to find we have to find average we have to find count we have to find max min uh, we have to find uh, product and we have to find sum sum of all these numbers right that's all that we have to find right so why don't we put a drop down menu so in terms of the functions we've used subtotal but we're probably going to use a drop down menu now that's a recap we've already studied this let's say i want to put the drop down menu here in this particular cell where do i find that i go to data within data i go to data validation click on data validation select list when you say list source and that's your source and you close and say okay so there's the drop down menu and i can select whatever i want in the drop down menu now right now based on the selection i want to change the argument here this four that i've selected when i say average i want this to change to one how do i do that in this function i need to find out what is what so one is average two is count four is max five is min six is product and nine is sum in other words one two four five six and nine and i can use more of these right so i've created a table correct we've created a table now all i need to do is do a v lookup for whatever is selected here right so let's do a v lookup of what is selected here that's the lookup value that's the array that we are looking at we're going to look at column one and column two we want the value from column two we click on zero because we want exact match and we get one if i change this to max i get four if i change this to sum i get nine so we are deriving this value out right all I need to do is link this to the first argument in our subtotal function. So instead of this one being hard coded, instead of this one being hard coded, what we are going to do is we are going to copy this. We are going to copy this VLOOKUP formula. We are going to go to the function arguments and instead of one being hard coded, we are going to paste it here. So now your VLOOKUP is throwing the answer as nine and the moment it throws the answer as nine subtotal function gives a formula result 503 which is the sum correct so this is a nested function function within another function but this gives a remarkable amount of flexibility to us right so if I click on ok and now I select the max it changes to max I select min it changes to min I select to average it changes to average I select to product that's a huge number and that's why it's going out of bounds I select count it changes to count right that's basically flexibility at its top so now all the user has to do is basically select from this and the number shall get calculated automatically right what doesn't look nice is all these so I can remove this maybe I don't want to show this table also so I can hide this table and once I hide this table, all I need to do is this and just like magic, it'll keep working, right? That's the power of putting flexibility in a model. So it's not like I cannot solve it using a sum function or an average function. It is just that if I put it this way, it becomes much more easy to understand, user friendly and flexible, right? And that is the primary purpose when you're trying to build a financial model that the more you can use these functionalities to make the model flexible and robust and user friendly easy to use you don't want the user to keep typing count and max every time you have given this functionality to the user that you can just come and select it from this list and it's gonna work right that's the idea of financial modeling right so that's it in this particular video just try out a few of these things on your own and uh, it would be fun to kind of try and 
use whatever we have learned in small small chunks to build together a model in finance thank you